In this video, I'll be comparing the Loop Deck CT to the Stream Deck. The Stream Deck is not the first controller for a computer, but it's one of the more well-known and widely used ones. Like the Loop Deck, it comes in several sizes with various features. I happen to have owned a Stream Deck for several years now, and I use it throughout my workday. I originally got it for live streaming, but it quickly became indispensable for a lot of other tasks. I had seen mentions of the Loop Deck online, but honestly, I never thought much of it because I always saw it as just a clone of the Stream Deck. But after working with one, I can now see that there are many important differences. First, one of the key differences is that the Loop Deck only has a touchscreen, while the Stream Deck has physical buttons overlaid onto a touchscreen. I'll come back to why that is important later. The feel of the Stream Deck buttons is nice. They are on the slicker side compared to the Loop Deck's tactile buttons, which are rougher with a matte finish. The Loop Deck tactile keys feel more like traditional keyboard keys. The Loop Deck touchscreen feels a lot like a smartphone screen. It feels more like glass than plastic. The Stream Deck keys are plastic, so they are a little slicker. They are also concave, whereas the touchscreen buttons on the Loop Deck are flat. If the sound of the tactile buttons matters to you, the Stream Deck buttons make a soft popping sound. Whereas the Loop Deck keys emit a high-pitched click that sounds like a cheap keyboard. The sound is much more dampened on the Stream Deck. The touchscreen buttons on the Loop Deck are silent since there are no moving parts. This could be a huge advantage if you're concerned about noise polluting your audio recording. The button sensitivity is about the same on both devices in regards to the tactile buttons. The touchscreen on the Loop Deck CT is more responsive because there is no button between your finger and the touch surface. It doesn't take a lot of force to press the Stream Deck buttons, but you do need to make contact with the screen. Both the Loop Deck CT and the Stream Deck Plus feature touchscreens. You can tap and swipe the screens on both devices, but on the Stream Deck Plus, you can also tap and hold to access commands. Both devices allow you to customize the brightness and can be quite bright or very dim. They appear to be equal in maximum brightness. One difference in the screen is that when viewing it from a steep angle, the Loop Deck gets a lot dimmer, but the Stream Deck gets distorted by the concave button shape. In regard to the device orientation, the Stream Deck is more adaptable because it doesn't have as many controls and physical labels. The Stream Deck features a quick orientation preference that allows you to set up your device vertically or even flip it upside down. The Loop Deck has a similar feature, but you program it to a button. In either case, the icons will reorder automatically, which could be good or bad depending on your expectation. Fortunately, it's easy enough to manually reposition the buttons. Another control option available are the dials which are included in the Loop Deck CT. The older Stream Deck I have does not have dials, but the Stream Deck Plus does. The Loop Deck CT has a larger number of dials. You can press the dials to perform additional commands on both devices. Both devices make it quite easy to export and import your settings. I recommend backing up these settings often. I haven't lost profiles on either of these devices, but do it just in case you have an issue with your computer or you need to move your settings to a new computer. The Stream Deck includes an adjustable stand, though I don't use it because the device is more ergonomic and stable without it. It's a cheap plastic stand that's not very impressive anyway. As far as customizable parts, the Stream Deck Plus offers custom dials and faceplates. Nothing like that is offered for the Loop Deck CT. Both devices are matte black. This makes it very easy to see the touchscreen and the LED labels, but the dials become difficult to see in low light, especially in front of a computer screen. I was going to poke fun at someone who would spend money on custom dials, but now I see that I was wrong. I suppose you could put a small round sticker on each of the dials to increase their visibility. You'd think with all the LEDs on the Loop Deck CT, the dials would be illuminated too. The dimensions of the Loop Deck CT are 6.2 by 5.9 by 1.18. That's in inches. Most of the depth comes from the dials. Without those, it's maybe only half an inch thick. The Stream Deck I have is smaller overall at 4.6 by 3.3 by 1 inch. That's without the stand, of course. The newer Stream Deck Plus is more comparable in size to the Loop Deck CT, but it's much thicker at 4.3 inches. I think this is because the device is already pretty thick, but when you add the dials and built-in stand, it gets even thicker. 
In terms of build quality, the Loop Deck CT features an aluminum cover, whereas the Stream Deck is all plastic. One thing I can't comment on is how the Loop Deck will last, since I've not had it very long. The Stream Deck has been going strong for about three or four years. Both devices connect through USB, but the Loop Deck CT has a detachable and replaceable USB cable, while the Stream Deck cable is fixed. Should this cable become severed, I'd have to buy a new Stream Deck. Fortunately, the newer versions have detachable cables as well. There isn't any internal storage on the Stream Deck, but the Loop Deck CT has 8GB. The operating systems supported by the Loop Deck CT are Windows 10 or later and Mac OS 10.14 or later. The Stream Deck supports Windows 10 and Mac OS 10.15 or later. As far as lag, both devices are quite responsive. I didn't do a technical analysis or anything, but executing the commands feels near instant. The reliability of the commands feels equal as well. When you press a command, it works, unless you do something to interrupt it. I don't think one device performs better than the other in that regard. The quantity of command options on both devices is pretty substantial, but the Loop Deck CT offers a lot more. Though, some useful commands can only be found on the Stream Deck. One example is background processes for hyperlinks. The Loop Deck CT cannot run links in the background. This is useful for controlling smart lights and other webhooks. Both devices can be programmed with multi-actions or macros, as well as toggle switches. One frequently used command I'd like to put on the Loop Deck CT is a multi-action that presses Control twice. This activates the mouse cursor spotlight in Windows Power Toys, but it won't work on the Loop Deck for some reason. Therefore, I have to keep it on the Stream Deck for now. Now for the UI ease of use. Both devices can be customized with a control panel. The Stream Deck can be faster to set up since you can see multiple functions at once. Loop Deck makes it hard to show multiple commands at once, but you can reuse commands. You can also cut to move commands. The Loop Deck UI is much more complicated, but that's because you can choose from a larger number of commands. The Stream Deck UI feels much less intimidating and is easier to use overall. In terms of icon customization, the Loop Deck has a superior button editor. You can easily move text and images, but you cannot manually line break text like you can with the Stream Deck. Changing the background color of the icons is a chore on the Stream Deck, but it's very simple on the Loop Deck. The Stream Deck offers a large number of free icons by default. Both devices feature marketplaces where you can download additional free and paid content such as plugins and icons. The capacity of both devices is great. By adding pages and profiles, there is practically no limit to how many commands you can add. The only bottleneck is how many commands you can show at once. The Loop Deck CT has many more buttons and dials, so more can be shown at once. While the Stream Deck has traditionally been used for live streaming, it can be used for other purposes. Just as well, the Loop Deck CT is geared more toward content creation, but it can be used for live streaming as well. Considering the Stream Deck supports more third-party live streaming plugins, the Stream Deck has an edge in that regard. In particular, the Loop Deck CT doesn't support the XSplit plugin. However, you can create shortcuts in XSplit, which will let you change scenes, so you can still control much of XSplit with the Loop Deck. And the final comparison is the price of these devices. With the Loop Deck CT retailing at $559 and the Stream Deck Plus at $199.99, both are expensive devices, but the Loop Deck CT is significantly more pricey. In many respects, the Loop Deck performs better than the Stream Deck, but the two devices do basically the same thing. If all you need is something basic, the Loop Deck CT might be a waste of your money. If you're interested in learning more about the Stream Deck, I have reviewed it in a separate video. So which device do I prefer? I actually like both devices equally. Each device has its own purpose. First, the Loop Deck CT. I don't care for the dials other than the big dial, and I don't use the basic buttons much. A lot of the device is just wasted space for me. The touchscreen is also a little too sensitive for me. It can be easy to accidentally press a nearby command. I find the Loop Deck CT works best for commands that I don't use that heavily. By that, I mean I'm not keeping my hand on the device and pressing commands every few seconds. Some examples are starting, stopping, and pausing a recording, opening websites and folders, and launching applications. The physical plastic buttons of the Stream Deck are better for commands where you want to rest your hand on the buttons without pressing them. Here you can see how I'm using them quite often while editing this video in Timebolt. 
Resting my fingers on the loop deck touchscreen would be constantly setting these commands off. Don't get me wrong, the touchscreen has its strengths. In many cases, a light touch is better and faster than having to mash in a button. At this point, I don't have too many commands left on the Stream Deck because most are commands I use infrequently enough to move to the Loop Deck CT. What I have kept are buttons for any fast, reactive commands. I've also kept commands that are specific to certain apps. You can have the Loop Deck CT switch to the appropriate workspace as well. But having two devices means I can always access the static Loop Deck while getting the benefit of the Stream Deck showing the relevant workspaces for the currently active application. This is a benefit to me because there would be times when the Stream Deck would show the wrong workspace or the commands I needed were on a different page. Now I don't have to hunt as much to find what I'm looking for. I can always start and stop my recording no matter which app I'm working in. In terms of size, I much prefer the Stream Deck since the Loop Deck CT is too large for where I'd like to keep it. Had I not received this for free, would I have gone out and bought one? At almost $600, definitely not. I was getting by just fine with the less expensive Stream Deck. If I could get the best of both worlds and have physical buttons with a touchscreen background on the Loop Deck, would I buy it? Probably not if it's almost $600. I can get the newer Stream Deck Plus for $200 and it comes with dials and a touch strip. It's too bad that the software isn't as good on the Stream Deck. What I would like is the software from the Loop Deck with the buttons and price of the Stream Deck. Would I recommend buying both devices? Sure, if you don't mind spending almost a grand on controllers, but I think it's a matter of time before either Stream Deck closes the software gap or Loop Deck overlays tactile keys on their touchscreen. That's all for this comparison. If you're interested in more reviews of products for content creators, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and stay creative.